Hello, my friends of Clarity. Today we have a quick session about Boost Detail, a new operator in Baselight 6. As usual, please ask your questions in the chat or comment below the videos. And now let's jump into Baselight. Let's have a look at Boost Detail, which is a new spatial tool that we added in Baselight 6. Spatial means that pixels are treated based on the surrounding pixels in the image. And that means we cannot bake spatial tools into 3D lookup tables. Let's put it above my look layer. Boost Detail does not have many parameters to control it. The most important one is the gain parameter, which modifies the strength of the effect on the image. When I raise the gain to a very high value, you can see the effect of the tool very clearly. It makes the images more crisp, it clarifies certain areas, and as the name suggests, it boosts up details on images. But you should be careful if you apply it with a very strong gain, then it's easy to end up with somehow overprocessed looking images. So let's dial that down to a more modest level something like here, 0.6. And this can help on shots similar to this one that are shot maybe with a softer lens or that have a very soft characteristic. So here, this is without boost detail, this is with. From the response, boost details lies roughly between the sharpen tools and boost contrast, for example. So sharpen tools are typically working on the finest structures of the image. So they're sharpening the finest edges and the highest spatial frequencies. Boost contrast works on very low spatial frequency, much more like a local contrast. And boost detail lives in the middle. It works typically in the mid range of the spatial frequencies. On the next shot, let's examine some more of the parameters of boost detail. So first here, I raise the gain parameter. And now I'm zooming in to my output image. And you should clearly see how it amplifies here the details on these mountains in the background. The scale parameter defines the radius of the tool relative to the image's width. So in contrast to an absolute radius in pixels, this will give the same response of the parameter for an HD and for an Ultra HD image. Let's raise the gain a lot to make the effect of the scale more obvious. So if I apply the tool with a very small scale value, we should see that now only the fine details here in the mountains are amplified and more visible with the tool. Now when I raise that scale parameter, notice how, the, how larger areas are also getting more local contrast. And if I raise it even higher, we should see that more and more larger areas here now in these uh, ranges are now affected by the tool. But I say the, the default value is a nice value to start with. Let's examine the threshold parameter. Larger threshold parameters mean the tool is affecting more parts of the image and a lower threshold image means fewer parts of the image are affected. Threshold defines the contrast threshold where the tool is working. Have a close look at this border here between the sunny snow and the snow in the shadows. Currently, our tool does not affect this contrast edge much or not at all, but only these edges here with lower contrast. When I raise the threshold, we can see that now more and more also these harsher contrast edges are now considered to be amplified through the tool. And so now we can also see a clear difference between these ones. But if we overdo it, obviously our image will then look more and more processed. And notice how the edge of the mountains here are showing an ugly halo effect. This is what we don't want. So be careful with raising the threshold value in these cases. So now I'm lowering the threshold so that our mountain edge here is clear. And we can see we still have a nice effect on the overall 
image here. Probably I will dial it down a bit and again. That's generally a good strategy, raising the gain very high, adjusting the other parameters and then lowering the gain to a more modest level. So let's see it on the global image. This is before, this is after, before, after. Let's move on. On this shot here, we can examine the shadow threshold value. But first, let's apply some boost detail here. So I raise the gain again, quite high. I fine tune the scale parameter. Yeah, maybe let's use a little bit higher value here for the city so that I have a nicer effect here on these buildings. We can play with the threshold, but I think the default already worked quite nice. We can see a clear effect on the image, probably too strong in that case, but let's keep it like that to understand the shadow threshold better. So now let's have a look at our Luma waveform here. Without the tool, we have no clipping in the blacks. With the tool, our blacks are clipping. This is an important property of the tool that you need to be aware of. Boost detail can degrade the shadow details of your image by pushing values below zero and clamping them at zero. So I insert base grade now downstream of boost detail and raise the flare value. And you can see that no details are coming back here in the shadows. Now, if I go back to boost detail and bypass it, we can see here everything looking fine with boost detail. Now we can see some clamping here in the shadows. And this is what the shadow threshold is for. So with the shadow threshold, we can smoothly roll off the tool in the shadows and therefore protect the shadows from clamping. So let's delete our flare downstream and go back to uh, our normal image here with the signal getting clamped at zero. Now when I raise the shadow threshold, you can see that I can protect the shadows from clamping. There you should be very careful. Whenever you apply boost detail, always check your signal in the shadows and protect it from clipping there. And also typically you should not apply it with a gain that high. My general recommendation is go up to a gain of 1.0. When you go beyond 1.0, you should be more careful, especially about your blacks. This is a final before, after, and now let's move on. On the next shot, I want to draw the viewer's attention here to that perfume bottle. I want to give a special treatment here for the bottle. That's why I already added a shape and tracked it throughout the shot so that we have a shape here for the bottle. Uh, but what do we do inside the shape? Let's zoom in for a moment. So typically what I would do in such a case is go into base grade, bright zone, raise it all the way up three stops first and then slowly lowering the pivot point until we have a nice glow here on the bottle. Once I found a nice pivot for the glow, maybe something like this here, and then reducing that maybe to just two stops push, which still gives us a nice push here for the highlights of the bottle. But on top of that, I want to now also add boost detail to enhance the texture of the bottle. So here I raise the gain until I see a nice effect. We can also play a little bit with the scale to see if it somehow improves our effect. I would say, no, default value is good. What about the threshold? No, if we do too much, it also quickly looks overprocessed, maybe a little bit more something like this. The net effect of our layer is now from here to here. Let's see it in full screen before, after. Yeah, that clearly grabs the attention of my eye. Now these sharp contrast edges here are taking my eyes there. And let's see it throughout the shot. Yeah, looking good. Maybe I pause somewhere here at the end before, after. Definitely a good improvement. On a real project, I would now probably reduce the global effect of that layer a little bit to blend it in more realistically into the shot. And now it still gives us a nice effect, but not as strong and maybe overly strong as before. And using boost detail through a shape is my general recommendation to you. 
So this is what I would suggest in many cases if you want to use the tool. So let's go back to our first shot here and delete the boost detail and insert a new layer. Now inside the layer, I'm adding boost detail here. Now cranking it up again to make their faces more clear. Maybe something like this. And now instead of treating the whole image with that effect, I'm now applying a shape for that layer here, feathering the shape heavily so that we have a smooth roll off for the surround, maybe a little bit more. And on the opposite side, we can now apply another boost detail. And for the outside, we are going into the negative range of the boost detail. So this is what we can also use the tool for, is for softening or for applying the negative effect. So let's stick here, for example, with negative 0.5 with extended ranges. We could go even further, but I guess that, that that's a good value here. And so now for the outside, we can see it's having a nice effect here. Look at this guy here in the background before, after. And if we see the net effect of the whole layer now with inside and outside, we are really focusing again the eyes on the center of the frame. Maybe this one here is now even too strong. So this is also a general advice of me. Instead of raising the tool for the inside more and more, sometimes it can help reducing the tool or doing the opposite on the outside. This then also gives a nice separation. So that can avoid overprocessing or running into artifacts sometimes. So do the opposite on the outside inside the same layer, then we get also a nice effect here. Okay, so these were my examples for boost detail. Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is that boost detail is a color space aware operator. So it should react always the same and should not have a different reaction when you're changing your working color space. Okay, so that's all for this session. Thanks for watching and I see you for the next one. Bye bye.